how many blokes did you have out on the track today, CD, and how many were, were missing, impacted through protocols and various other reasons? Yeah, look, I mean, we're just, I think it'd be, if I frame this the right way, obviously the, the both the AFL and the PA, the AFL-PA are, are keen for us not to specify individuals. And, and I've seen your tweet, Max, I, I knew that you'd have some issues past once you got past your fingers and toes with regard to numbers on the track today. Um, look, we, we had about a, a quarter of our squad who were under the AFL's uh, health and safety protocols at the moment. Um, you know, obviously that will, that number will go up and down over the next period of time. Um, AFL clubs as a portion of society are clearly going to be affected through this particular period of pre-season. Thank you for that little jab. I did note that I, I was looking, I counted, I made sure I specified as just my count, but uh, with that number, do you uh, did you have an expectation over the holiday break when you came back? Like, did you give them specific rules to say we want you to steer clear of it or live your lives? Is, is it what you expected? Yeah, well, when you've got players who are going back into their home ports where there are significant numbers of cases, probably more, you know, than uh, obviously here in South Australia, um, you know, we knew that we were going to be affected in some capacity. Um, yeah, I think what you see, what you will see across the competition is this period of time. Yeah, there will be a significant number of people because you know the players are going back into their families, into their friends. Um, the reality is, is that you know there's, you know, we we knew that there would be a group of people who were going to be impacted. Um, obviously, from here on in, you know, the club's got to consider both their health impact but also the performance impact. And yeah, our players are well aware of that. They've done it really well over the last couple of years. Um, I'm sure that there'll be a settling of those numbers across the competition and then we'll look to the next break times to, to see you know the way that uh, the transmission amongst the AFL cohort actually go. And just in terms of the players that are missing with COVID or, or in the protocols for whatever reason, is everyone going okay? No, no one having too bad a time with it? No, I mean the, the, the impact that you know, the, the people have had that I'm aware of so far haven't had massive amounts of symptoms, but at the same time, you know, we, we are considering both the health issue and, and the performance impact as well. And, you know, if a player has to spend 10 days plus extra time out of uh, our training sessions, then, you know, there, there is an impact. You can't deny the fact that anyone who misses, you know, let's say 15 days once the player then has some sort of ECG when they come back testing and then, you know, we're, we're taking the approach of easing them back into training. Um, there'll be an impact, there's no doubt. I mean, the last thing we want pre-season to turn into is a fiasco across the competition. And so, you know, the, the need is for our players to be mindful of, of what they're doing. Thanks, CD. Uh, CD, how, I guess, challenging do you think it's going to be from a club perspective that in South Australia, there's different rules to, I guess, the other states, like, you know, 10 day um, isolation, if you do test positive and um, the close contact definition. Yeah, look, it's, it's going to be a challenge for us, but it, you know, it's, it's what we have to deal with. There's no point in whinging about that. I mean, the government have got to do what they think is right for broader South Australia and, and we'll continue to, um, you know, look to comply with those regulations. But I guess the longer it goes into the season, you know, into the actual playing of games at AFL level, let alone the AFLW comp that's going on at the moment. But from our standpoint, you know, it'd be fantastic for those rules to align when the season actually starts. And I guess given that you do have to operate under those rules, is there anything that you're doing um, differently in the club maybe like, I guess, you know, not having indoor meetings for any longer than 15 minutes, dividing up groups or anything like that? Yeah, so we'll, we'll do as much as we can to comply with the close contact, you know, rules. I mean, the last thing that we want is for, you know, an individual to be in here and then for us to not be doing the right things internally such that, <clears throat> excuse me, such that we don't get to, a, you know, a, a clear bill from a close contact standpoint. 
I mean, the, the rapid test that we do, you know, we had a player this morning who, um, you know, got through his uh, PCR test that we all had to have coming back into training late last week, uh, who tested positive on a rapid test this morning. So we've already had to, you know, deal with how quickly you need to be able to, and agile you need to be to, to turn those things around. So, um, but we'll be really mindful, Simeon, of the, of the protocols that we've got in place. We've got people wearing masks. You would have seen me come in with my mask on. We're, we're really mindful of the impact that even being a close contact to someone can actually have. And obviously our players who live with other players are also, you know, um, have to understand that they're at an increased risk as well and, and that these things can multiply very quickly. I'm looking at, I guess, other sports like the EPL, the NBA, NBA to, for example, what kind of impact do you think, I guess, you know, how transmissible Omicron kind of seems to be to have on the AFL this year? Well, look, probably not for me to, to discuss the transmissibility of, of this. I'm uh, just a footy manager, mate. But um, I think from a management perspective, there's clearly issues that we need to face and and what we can't avoid, sorry, what we can't have happen where possible is that significant numbers of players go down within the club. You know, we understand that players living their lives and, and it's important that the players are able to to live their lives in a capacity. But, you know, what we don't want is for them to come in here and be put in situations based on clubs decision making whereby they might be um, deemed as a close contact or even worse, actually get it from someone whilst here at the club. Some of these things will be un unavoidable, unavoidable and we understand that, you know, we're, that people can be unlucky. I'm sure you all know people who so far would have done the right thing but have just been unlucky. But you know, we need to manage that risk as much as we possibly can. And uh, do you have any, I guess, clarification about the pre-season game against Fremantle in WA? Well, at this stage, we're forging ahead with getting it organised. So I think it's it's going to happen either on the 25th or 26th of February. Um, I think both um, us and, and also Adelaide will head across together. So, um, you know, it's most likely that it'll happen on the same day. But, you know, I imagine that that will get finalised over the next few days and we'll, um, we'll work towards that. I mean, the way that WA handles it is going to be fascinating when you consider, you know, what the states who have opened up have gone through in the, you know, in the month after. Uh, it'll be really interesting to see how the WA teams, you know, um, manage their situation over there. Are you almost expecting, I guess, or I'm probably not expecting, you know, that the WA government kind of pushes back, I guess, a border reopening and makes it a little bit more difficult given what, the, I guess, what you've seen in other states or... Well, I mean, it'll just be interesting, won't it? I mean, I'm, I'm not sure what position the government takes, but if, if we look at the way that the other states have gone, including our own, you know, the minute that you open the border more broadly, it seems like, you know, you're opening up the potential for what's happening here and elsewhere to happen. So, you know, for us, I guess there's, you know, a good point that the worst is looking like it's going to be happening over the next two or three weeks or has already happened, whereas the Perth clubs are going to face that a little bit closer to their season starting, but if that's the way that it goes. Well, Hazy's got nothing. Um, what, what's uh, the latest with Miles Bourbon? We saw a release just before CD. <laughs> Yeah, so Miles had a, a routine checkup just before Christmas, which, and he, and he didn't have any pain or issue at the time, which just showed that um, Miles had a screw loose in his, in his shoulder. Um, I shouldn't laugh at that, but saying a screw loose sort of made me chuckle. But let, let me reframe that. So Miles had um, a screw which was um, not as tight as what we would have hyped, hoped in his shoulder, and, and therefore we decided to take a conservative approach with that you know he'll be he's obviously had the surgery over the, the Christmas New Year period and you know we're sure that he'll be back now um, you know close to round one so I guess the challenge was do we do it now or do we wait and 
hope that he doesn't show any you know issues with it but we thought it would be best to to get it done now and and make sure that he's ready to come back you know pretty close to round one it's not like coming back from a shoulder reco or anything like that he'll be able to get <clears> back into it pretty quick ramp it all up yeah max we're expecting him to to be back into full training as i said before round one and hopefully he can get a, a trial game in before then if not then it won't be too far away from then so at least he gets you know a good part of the season to um to uh, perform in and, and that's the challenge at this time of the year is you're, you're weighing up you know the the need for them to to have this done you know compared to having it at the halfway point of the year and if we waited till then the most likely outcome then would have been that his season would be over so we decided to get it done now as we did with you know hugh jackson's um hip <coughs> before christmas as well are there any other sore boys apart from from those two that are unable to to get on the track at the moment no well, that's where the rest of those guys were max i i had a go at your tongue in cheek you, you you're aware of that i know but um <coughs> i think fantasia's you know knee we manage you know cleary's foot we manage there's plenty of guys who you know come in and out of trainings based on their program so you know but no other injuries so to speak you know bergman was the the one over the christmas period which we would have preferred not to occur but it has and so We'll manage it from there. Farrell obviously is in is in his rehab phase, but the rest of the boys, when they come back, they should be ready to go. Cedric, can um, I ask about the two uh, Perth boys? Um, mm -hmm. They've obviously did they get back today, and was it obvious that they'd done all the work that was left to them? Where they obviously didn't train uh, in November. Yeah, so they're they're both back in South Australia, and you know from what I have seen of them so far they've they've done all the right things it's all we could expect you know it was, it was a management call to to say for them to to stay over there it was probably a, a pretty good one in the end but they they've done everything that we could have asked you know both jake who you know, Pacini, who um you know has battled shoulder issues over the last he looks really strong which is great and uh and mitch you know when we saw him you know was also looking you know, really powerful, which is which is a good thing for our forward line coming into uh, coming into the season. And you mentioned a quarter of your squad weren't there today. What what effect did that have on your pre planning? Obviously, the first day back you would have um, wanted to get a lot of work done. Yeah, look, we we'd done some planning before we left for for Christmas, so yeah, you know, the, the guys were aware of yeah you know, what we were going to be doing from a from a training perspective, but. Look, I, there's there's no doubt that I mean these numbers, Vicky, are going to go up and down. You know, every every training session, probably. I mean, that's the reality of what we're dealing with. Whether the players who are able to come out of the protocols or whether they're going into them, so we're going to have to be good enough, and the coaches are going to have to be good enough to be able to design training sessions around the numbers that they've got, rather than just designing the training session and um, and that's it. So. That's what we're going to have to face. As I say, I think our players and our coaches have done a fantastic job over time in being agile enough to do that. And um, at this stage, it looks like we're going to have to ask them to, to be able to do that again in 2022. Um, CD, I'm just trying to phrase this question, I guess, right. Is, is there, I guess, at the start of pre-season, is it a, you know, a perfect time for maybe someone to maybe I contract COVID. I'm not saying you know they they should give, and I guess it might have a minimal impact on the, on the season. If you know what I, if you know what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I do. And look, we're we're not taking that approach. I, I think there's there's been a fair bit of commentary around yeah you know, whether that's the right thing or not. I mean, we're certainly of the view that our players and staff, for that matter, should be looking to avoid um, and doing whatever they can to not get COVID. Not only you know because of the health um, problems that you know, come with it and bearing in mind you know yes there have been a number of people who haven't showed massive numbers of symptoms but unfortunately you know people are still losing their life with it across australia so there's no way that you know in my position i could honestly suggest to anyone that that's a good course of action and then secondly outside of the health you know the as i say that the people who are getting it within the footy club at the moment are having to spend their isolation period, but 
that doesn't mean that they come straight back into training straight away. So you've not only got you know, the, the heart testing that um, you know, our, our doctors are making our players go through after contracting COVID, but it's also the fact that you know, we're easing them back into training. So you know, if you're spending 15 or 20 days out of training right now, that's not a good outcome for anyone. So I think the, the better outcome is for our people to look to avoid it where they can. But as I say, you know, we also know that some people are gonna get unlucky and you know, we've gotta be able to, to cater for those people as well. Um, are those do you worry, that are close contacts and like, don't have COVID, are they able to train at home? Are they getting equipment delivered? Yeah, so we're, we're working through that um, you know, now. So the, the challenge obviously is for them to you know, isolate at their, their own home or you know, they need to be in a situation where they're not close to anyone else. So, you know, but you know, fair to say that if you're a close contact who doesn't have COVID, then our expectation is that you continue to train, yes. Uh, and our challenge is to make sure that they've got in the right environment to actually do that. Have you had any indication, sorry, Sim, have you had any indication mm -hmm. early Maybe, I don't know if anyone's recovered from it, about what COVID can actually do to a, a football, like, and how long it takes them to come back, or is the data still way too small for that sort of answer? Yeah, look, I, I don't have the data specifically, but what I can say is that most people who have either trained through it, most people that I know um, who have trained not long after contracting it have felt lethargic. You know, some have still got a, a lingering cough. So, um, you know, the, they're having to, to work through that, which is not, you know, a great time to, to be walking around with a cough because everyone looks at you funny. Um, I, I know that full well. Um, so, yeah, it's just something that um, the guys are having to manage. But, yeah, I mean, fair to say that there are some training impacts. And as I say, you know, we are looking to put our own level of detail over it as well. Um, I was just going to say, what's, how do you see, I guess, the sound? Yeah, how are you, how are you going to, I guess keep the players who play Sandfor involved with the Sandfor team safe from COVID. Do you see that as being a significant challenge for the club this year? Yeah, I do. And I think it's going to be a significant challenge for the SNFL as well. When you consider the rules that they put around our, our, uh, you know, our contracted players, <clears throat> we're, we're going to be faced with situations where we've obviously got, you know, our, our current group of AFL listed players. We've got an SNFL group as well. You know, how deeply we have to go into that pool will be really fascinating. So I'm sure that the SNFL are contemplating the way that um, the way that they might change things, you know, based on this for us. Because the reality is, is that um, I think for the integrity of their competition, that some of their rules need to be looked at. What can you, I guess, elaborate on what rules do you think need to be looked at? Well, I mean, the, the challenge will be for, for both us and Adelaide to have a deep enough pool of players um, from an SNFL contracted perspective to be able to cope with both injuries at AFL level, COVID issues at AFL level, but also COVID and injury issues at SNFL level. So <clears throat> if the SNFL are wanting to maintain integrity in, in their comp and to have players who are of a standard playing at SNFL level, then you know, we probably have to revisit you know, what those rules are going to look like, you know, not now, but closer to the season when we've got a bit more information.